Thank you. So I believe a uh, few of uh, more participants are supposed to join, but uh, still uh, nine o'clock means nine o'clock. So let's start our training journey today for day one of USA credited OSHA 30 hours construction industry. So Mr. Abdurrahman, we'll take few minutes just for open discussion. Okay. Uh, if you don't mind, would you like to tell me something about your professional career and what exactly you are doing or what type of uh, leadership position you have within your company? And uh, I, am I am electrical engineering. Okay, okay. So how much experience you have? What? How many years you've been working? Like five years, six years or... No. Now, uh, maybe uh, two months. Ah, two months. Not, no problem. No problem. Inshallah, after this training, uh, since uh, I've been working for the last 19 years, so I would love to share a lot of my experience and uh, surely within, uh, right after this training, okay, you will have plenty you, of, uh, uh, you know, uh, practical examples and scenarios and case studies, inshallah, how the safety management system must be managed in any company, Inshallah. especially in construction industry, okay? Okay, thank you. So, Mr. Abdirahman, since every, everybody has some common sense, and of course, uh, you have some intelligence as well, what do you think, why accidents are still happening? Because this is the most important question I always ask before I start any of my training session, in, especially for HSC. So what do you think, what are the real root causes of uh, accidents or incidents, you know? Why accidents are still happening? I'm not asking about bookish knowledge. I'm talking mm -hmm. to Mr. Abderrahman's mind and brain, okay? And your intelligence, your okay. concepts. What do you think, why accidents are still happening? Well, uh, I don't know, uh, like what, I mean, uh, like, I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, go before. Okay. Okay. Take an example of driving process. Okay. Okay. Take an example of driving. I mean, while driving, especially at the roadside, uh, you know, uh, either it's a long drive or it's a short drive. Maybe the phone, the phone. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, the street, not uh, maybe speed. Okay, over speed. Sorry, speed. And might be the quality uh, of the road is not good enough. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Okay. Maybe and the it, road uh, have many cows. Don't. Uh, What's the, the road? Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Many, uh, many, 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 uh, yeah. many uh, accidents uh, happened in the road. Absolutely right. And it's a game of uh, seconds sometime, you know. Might be one second mistake, then it's all over. So that means uh, there are plenty of uh, root causes, but let's... Let me just share for the last 19 years how many root causes I got directly uh, from the experience of people or, you know, the way they think. Uh, that is the reason why accidents are still happening. So let me share, let me share these uh, root causes with you, okay? So, okay. Mr. Abdurrahman, uh, out of my uh, 25,000 plus students, the most of the audience they mention shortcuts as the number one cause of accidents and incidents. So, that's okay, okay. So they mentioned, because I, I just mentioned top 20 reasons, but of course, uh, I'll be keeping update all these things. But number one, most of my students, they mentioned shortcut is the number one cause of, you know, and why people love to shortcut, that is another debate. Why, okay. why they're taking shortcut? Like, you know, if somebody is... Uh, driving above than 180 kilometer per hour, 
either the manager told him to drive or this is his behavior or he have some kind of urgency at the road or he just want to keep his boss happy to be on time and showing him look i completed my job as quick as possible or is a human nature people love to take shortcuts yeah what i mean is each, each one of these 20 root causes we can do further root cause analysis of why these things are still happening or still yeah, exactly. you know, available in different companies right yeah and uh, for many of the people mention you know the carelessness then ignorance no attentiveness you know this number 4 nowadays is becoming more dangerous because we are addicted we are addicted with screens you know like mobile screen laptop screen you know yeah yeah like yeah, yeah. screen addiction is there and what is happening is our focus is diverting now we have distracted mind most of the time you know. like at this stage i'm talking to you mr abdurrahman but physically probably you are in front of me but mentally even i don't know where you are do you agree that okay i agree so this attention you know because of this uh, no attention or poor attention or uh, not being focused on the job let me give you an example uh, consider you have one employee at the site and this okay. one employee is uh, working for 12 hours okay. every day and he's a crane operator. Let's take, uh, you know, the professional example. Consider he's a crane operator. And okay. every day he's busy for 12 hours for rigging and lifting and, you know, supporting company operations for uh, moving things from here and there. Now, Mr. Abdurrahman, these 12 hours is equal to 46,200 seconds every day. This gentleman is available at site to perform your activities. 46,200 seconds. And what I told you, one second mistake is enough to create a disaster. Okay. Uh, let me give you an example of uh, this uh, Makkah Tower. I hope you remember. A terrible incident was happened. You know, this Makkah Tower, this uh, tower crane was started to fall down. Yeah. And the terrible fatalities were there. And later on, Saudi government took a lot of actions against Bin Laden. I hope you remember. No, I, I don't So that means one accident can destroy overall the goodwill of your business. It can destroy the assets of your company. It can destroy even the environment, you know. And of course, your people as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, it, you know, that is why it is uh, quite sometimes being mentioned, you know, if you believe safety is expensive, go and try an accident. Sure. So, uh, for, uh, for making realize to the companies, what we always encourage them, look, don't take safety department or kind of safety procedures or whatever they're doing in your company. Don't take it as your operational cost. This is kind of a business continuity cost. Like, let me give you an example. Can we get even a single project from Saudi Aramco or Saudi Electricity or Royal Commission or Sadara or Sabek or uh, Saudi okay, Customs man. or any other without a safety department? Yeah, we have. We are going for bidding and we're going to tell them, look, we don't have safety department or there is no safety officer or no safety manager, or we don't have any kind of safety supervisor even. All right. So uh, will they be allowing or awarding us any contract or any project? Of course not. Yeah. So that means safety department is kind of a backbone or a uh, most important, you know, that's why most of the companies, they started uh, understanding the value of this triangle, like safety, quality, and credibility. I repeat again, yeah. Abdurrahman, safety, quality, and credibility. 
If safety and quality and, and what? Sorry? Safety and the quality and what? Credibility. Credibility means the goodwill of the company. The name okay, of the company okay. in the market. That must not be spoiled. Okay. Like if you have a bad name in the company, can you get more jobs or can you can you get more projects if your goodwill is not good? Of course not. Of course not, yeah. So same way, if your company is compromising on safety standards or they are ignoring some of the quality standards, the age of this company is very less, very short. Yeah. So if we if we want to go long and we just want to ensure better sustainability of our uh, companies to grow day by day, then surely we have to think about sustainable safety management system to be effectively implemented within our companies. Now, Abdul Rahman, just I'm asking, either you are just started your career, you know, like two months, uh, you're talking okay. about the safety. So do you have any understanding about safety policy? Have you ever heard these words or have you ever studied any safety policy of any company? No, just uh, this company. I work uh, with the Bungaria now. Uh, okay. But uh, but uh, I show him. I show the safety uh, man. I don't uh, know what he what what I mean this work for the safety. Okay. I know for the course because I I need know what what we do for any accident for yeah okay. you know. Okay. Yeah, like that. Excellent. No problem. No problem. You know, whenever we design or whenever we develop any safety management system, we start from safety policy. You know? Okay. Because it's a foundation. It's a framework. It's a promise. It's a commitment, Mr. Abdurrahman. We are committing. Okay. We are giving a promise to the market, to all the stakeholders, that our company will make sure no accident or zero accident, zero harm yeah, to the yeah, environment. Because... This, uh, this is very important. You're absolutely right. And no violation to the legal laws. We'll be following uh, a lot of like whatever safety laws are there, well being implemented through government departments. We'll be following them. Okay. Now, on the other side, if a lot of violations are there or your accident graph is going up and up, like in 2020, your accidents within your company were only two. But in 2021, you have five. Yeah. So if the graph is going up and up, a time will come, no customer would love to work with your company. Sure. Because they're going to think you are irresponsible company. You don't have a safety uh, seriousness to implement. And you don't care about your people. And the customer can easily judge if you don't care about your people, that means you will not care about my products or services, you know. Yeah, yeah, of course. That is why now the market, you know, before you go for bidding, they ask, show us your safety manuals. Show us your international certifications. Share with us your safety policies. Even share the CV of your safety officer, your safety manager. Okay. Show us the credibility and professional strengths and competency of your other staff members, including engineers, either chemical engineers or electrical engineers or civil engineers, whoever is there. Show us yeah. and prove that they are the competent as a right person for the right job. Yeah. And then we will accept your application for bidding, you know. Even it's not a guarantee to give you the award because still price war is there. So, of course, they will consider a lot of other elements. But what I mean is just for application, you have to fulfill a lot of documentation. And this documentation, the foundational person is the safety department, the safety officer, the manager. The quality department, the quality officer, or the quality coordinator, you know, then they can submit all the documents to the 
to the client actually, and that client could be Saudi Aramco or Royal Commission or Saudi Electricity or any other brand, you know, because they are the leaders of the market. Okay. And uh, Mr. Abdurrahman, if you have unattentive or the guys who don't focus on the job, might be they are the painters, they are the welders, crane operators, you know, or any other person who is not focusing yeah, yeah, yeah. on the job, trust me, he's a threat for that particular project. Anytime, because of his poor focus or poor attentiveness, any fatal incident or accident could happen here because he's not focused. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, and a lot of my students, they mentioned, Abdurrahman, that poor knowledge is another reason. That because of this poor knowledge, they are not unable to uh, do their job more effectively or having some error-free grounds to complete their project, whatever process they are managing, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this poor knowledge should also be coming, it might be no trainings within your company. You, know? you are simply hiring people, but you are not serious to train them. Yeah. And most of uh, the CEOs, or I would say the owner of the business, I realize they always say, what would happen if we're going to train them and they'll run away. They'll find another job. But on the other side, you have to think what would happen if you don't train them. Sure. <laughs> They'll be doing uh, horrible things, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then Abdurrahman, number six, uh, you know, a lot of uh, students, they mentioned, overconfidence is another fatal root cause of accidents, you know, the overconfidence. Okay. I'm a, I'm a project coordinator, but I can operate crane also. I'm quite confident. I have 20 years experience at the site and I, I can operate any crane, but in practically, I'm not certified. I'm not trained enough, but I'm all overconfident that I can do it. Okay. And this overconfidence is also killing, you know, and creating a lot of horrible accidents. And another example is, oh, I have 10 years experience. Don't teach me anything. I know what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, of course. So this overconfidence is another killing point, you know, through this way. And a lot of people mention unsafe facts, unsafe conditions, effective tools and equipment, no use of PPs, no effective trainings, excessive workload, poor communication. Like Abdurrahman, like you can speak Arabic more uh, fluently. Yeah, but yeah. you can't speak Urdu and, or you don't know how to speak Kerala, you know, or kind of other languages. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So uh, because of this communication gap, it would be harder for you to manage different communities. You know, in at one project I noted 22 different nationalities, you know. That means... Diversity is there, even though diversity must be respectable, like people come to different countries and we work together, you know, like we go to America, we go to Australia, they come to Saudi Arabia, you know, our Saudis, they go there for work, for study. So it's a collaborative global village now, you know. Yeah, yeah. But the point is, if this communication is uh, not being managed effectively, that would be another reason of uh, accident. Like I trained you for something and you understood something entirely different. I guided you a few technical rules, but unfortunately you totally, you know, misunderstood all the technical points and you gone on your way, you know. That's another way how you're gonna create different accidents. Yeah, yeah. And I personally, you know, agree mostly with the number 14 point, not following the safety rules and regulations. And if we take the theories of Saudi Aramco, like if you study all their safety standards, they clearly have mentioned 
not following safety rules and regulations is the number one cause of accidents in Saudi Aramco. Saudi Aramco have clearly defined not following the safety rules yeah, and regulations yeah, yeah. is the number one cause of accidents in Saudi Aramco. Yeah, of course, because this one uh, Saudi Aramco is big company in Saudi Arabia. Absolutely, Absolutely right. No, the yeah, number fifteen sure, point sure for, for the safety. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Yeah. Continue, my brother. Yeah. So continue, uh, continue. Uh, yeah. yeah. So this number fifteen point is for leadership. Like you know, if your people are taking shortcuts, or they are careless, or they are ignorant, or they are not having better attention, or having poor knowledge or they are overconfident or having some unsafe acts or conditions or defective tools and equipments are there so or no PPs are there so first of all as a leader is your failure of the Rahman okay so the positive leadership is you accept you accept the gaps you accept yes that was my role but unfortunately I couldn't play effective leadership role. But in future, I'm going to take some positive, corrective, preventive actions and will make sure a better results. Like yeah. if my employees are taking shortcuts or they love to take shortcuts. That means as a leader, first of all, my failure because I'm not a mind changer of their members. I couldn't change their mindset. Either. Even though changing okay. the mindset is one of the biggest I would say the biggest challenge in the world, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like I can change might be everything within your company within one week or maybe overnight. But, but if the mindset is not positive or they simply damn care what is safety is all about, very few next few days, they will again scrap up everything. You know? So that's why the leadership have to be diligent to accept, you know, their, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they have to lead by example. They have to be role model. Let me give an example of okay. Rahman. Like if you are a general okay. manager of a company and you're visiting a site without helmet, without safety shoes, without, you know, any other PPs, maybe because of COVID-19, you're not wearing the even disposable mask. So what do you think? What would be the impact in the brains of others? Like that. Uh, yeah. Happened many, many accidents. Absolutely right. Because, because you have to lead the culture. You have to lead your company's culture by example. You have to be the role model leader. So I hope, uh, Abdirman, uh, that would be quite clear for you. It's a humble request if you can turn on your video so I can take a screenshot for attendance purpose. You know. Then we can move on further. You Just for a second, you need to turn on your video. So I, I will take a screenshot and that would help us to uh, put your attendance. You know. Okay, no problem. Thank you very much. That's a win. Yeah, just turn on your video, yes. Welcome, Ronaldo. Can you just turn on your video so we can take a screenshot for attendance purposes? You know? Okay, wait, wait, my friend.
Okay, so welcome, Ronaldo. We were just uh, in the middle of open discussion. And what we were talking is, why accidents are still happening? And we're not talking about vocational knowledge. It's all about, uh, you know, your experience or your understanding or kind of your common sense, why accidents are still happening. So Mr. Abdurrahman, he mentioned so many reasons, especially for driving process. So do you have something to share, Ronaldo? What do you think, why accidents are still happening? Even nobody wants accidents, but still, you know, still we are seeing a lot of fatalities, a lot of accidents globally you know, in different countries. So what do you think, why these accidents are still happening? And on the other side, millions of safety professionals are working, including me for different companies, right? So what do you think? Maybe he didn't uh, hear you. Yeah, Ronaldo, can you hear me? Please uh, uh, unmute your mic, you know, so you can talk to us. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, because uh, most of the people are uh, complacent, they are. Uh, they think they are already knowledgeable about their job and they're well experienced. So that's why they're very complacent. And uh, what you call this one? Uh, they think are they're well experienced and they are just neglecting the safety protocols. Uh -huh. So you mean sometimes they are overconfident as well because of their experience yes, sir. and they don't want to learn, you know, anything about safety, yes, right? Yes, sir. So we, we actually dig out, you know, out of my 25,000 different students and trainees globally in more than 12 countries. These are top 20 reasons. Why, and the number one cause, mostly my students, like 95%, I would say, they agree that the shortcut is the number one cause of accident. Even though uh, people, you know, they have, it's a human nature to take shortcuts or sometimes we save costs from different projects. And sometimes we just want to keep our boss happy, you know, to show our efficiency for different projects, right? Whatsoever yes, the reason is, but the shortcut means we can't be lucky forever. The problem with the shortcut is every time it is really hard to be lucky. Because any one second failure or one time failure, it would be a disaster. And a lot of yes. other reasons like shortcuts, carelessness, ignorance, no attentiveness, poor knowledge, overconfidence, like you mentioned, a lot of unsafe yes, acts sir. and conditions, defective tools and equipment, no use of PPs, no effective trainings. Trainings are there, but effectiveness is missing. Like at one of the projects, uh, because since I'm a safety auditor as well, so during the audit, I asked the safety manager, can you show me some induction record of your newly hired employees? And he showed me 250 records because that one lot came out for that particular project. So immediately, uh, the moment I went for some interviews, everybody mentioned only they signed the paper. There was no physical training at all. They simply signed attendance sheet. And that's, that is all about training, you know. So uh, if, if you are sending untrained people at a project site, of course, you know, more chances or the probability of accident will go up, right? So we, we truly need a leadership who can lead by example. Instead of playing with safety, they are, you know, uh, sensibly, uh, working as a mind changer for all the employees and trying to make sure not only the employees, even visitors, customers, even the government agencies, whoever is coming at site, they are trying to, you know, secure them or keeping them safe through their system, right? And that is the biggest yes, role of the leadership. If a leadership is not leading by example, the leadership itself would be a big disaster for that company. That is why we need a leadership who can like lead by example. Let me give you another example. Like if you have, if you are a president of a company and you never visited your site or any of your site, project site. So that means you're not serious. You're not involved at site. 
Even though you have project manager, you have safety manager, you have safety officer, you have plenty of engineers even, but still as a, as a leader, at least you must be involved and visit different sites and see and show your employees your direct involvement as a front leader. That because you are the uh, on the other side, the key leader of the company as a president. So show them as an example, as a role model. So people would love to follow safety rules and regulations. Like on number 14 point in Saudi Aramco, why they mentioned the number one cause of accidents and incidents in Saudi Aramco is not following safety rules and regulations. They clearly have mentioned. That means if people love to follow or they give respect to follow all these uh, safety rules and regulations, of course, you know, they will try their level best not to see any accident anymore within their company. And that is the biggest purpose of uh, uh, any training or any kind of safety system, you know, to reduce number of injuries, number of accidents, number of absenteeism even. Because, and if your people are healthy and safer, of course, quality and productivity of that business will go up also. And on the other side, the goodwill of the company, the goodwill of the company, that graph would also be positive in the market. Like uh, whenever you see, uh, you go for bidding for any brand, like for Saudi Aramco, for Royal Commission or any other, they, they truly evaluate you based on your history also. Like how many fatal accidents are there or how many uh, injuries or illness or what kind of your uh, data analysis is talking about, about the history of your company. Like how you are taking care of your processes, your companies, assets, your people, and how you are taking care of the environment as well. So they will dig out your history. And if the history says, you are the best company with zero accident, zero harm to the environment, no damage to the uh, assets of the company, even to the, you know, the, to your people, of course, they would love to award contract to your company. Otherwise, it would be harder even to gain single project, like if your accident graph every year, every day going up and up, who would love to work with you? Of course, no one, because nobody want to compromise, like I mentioned earlier, safety, quality, and credibility. Remember this triangle, guys. Safety, quality, and credibility. Nobody wants to compromise on that. Credibility means the goodwill of the company. And accident, I gave one example earlier. And that example was all about, you know, this uh, Makka Tower incident. Uh, let, me, let me clearly mention the name as well. Bill Laden was involved there, right? So where is the name of Bill Laden? Today, they are crying for business because of one terrible incident. That is why it is uh, quite mentioned, you know, if you, if you think safety is expensive, then try and have an accident, right? So that is why practically I evaluated from the last 25,000 students for the last 19 years, these are the top 20 reasons. If these reasons are still existing within your company, trust me, you truly need to work on the mindset, mindset of your em employees. You as a leader have to be the mind changer. You have to be a better convincer, better motivator, the encourager, who can change drastically the behavior of the people, who can change the culture of the uh, company as well. Again. If you as a leader unable to change the mindset, trust me, you should go for further training for leadership, maybe effective safety leadership, maybe emotional intelligence, maybe some you know, uh, conflict management or different kind of uh, trainings which can boost up your soft skills, right? Otherwise, safety knowledge is everywhere. You can Google up, you can go to YouTube, you can go to OSHA website. It's quite visible now. Anytime you can access any level of knowledge. Knowledge is not a problem. Now we need the mind changers, the real leaders. Like if you are a safety manager, the company would definitely expect zero accident. Zero harm to the environment, zero damage to the company's assets, right? If this graph is not being achieved positively, even the company will definitely don't need such leaders, I'm telling you. Even though every brick have a value, safety is the responsibility of everyone. That's another deal we have to bear in our mind.
Welcome, guys. We got few more like Eric, Alan is there, and Romnick. Can you just turn on your video so I can take your attendance? Like just one screenshot, so we can co complete the formality for attendance. Warmly welcome, guys. Okay, guys. Uh, welcome for this important training session. It was just kind of a short break to complete the attendance process. So we were talking about why accidents are still happening. So I, I, I shared with all of you the top 20 uh, root causes, what I got from the audience uh, from more than 25,000 students. And mostly 95% they mentioned the shortcut. The shortcut is the number one cause of fatalities, accidents, incidents. That is what they highlighted. No, the question is, how can we avoid incidents or accidents? What should we do? I'm just going to unmute your mic. So please, you can speak up. What do you think how we can avoid accidents or incidents? The procedures, the rules and regulations, the safety policies, the kind of job responsibilities, the SOPs, standard operating procedures, kind of work instructions, whatever rules are set for each activity or kind of process, they must be falling in. Now, you know, just for your, even though you guys are experienced, but still let me share, whenever we sign any management consulting project, like to develop safety management system, we start implementing one important slogan. And that slogan we call, be a safety manager of your own area. You are a welder, you are a janitor, you are an office boy, you are a general manager, you are a sales manager, you are a project manager. Please be the safety manager of your own area. If you don't want the safety officer or safety manager to come every day and shout on you and, you know, just penalized and giving you warning letters because of poor housekeeping, because of unsafe conditions, because of some unsafe acts. If you don't want to see all these things, then be the safety manager of your own area and accept the ownership, accept the responsibility. You know. And then uh, nobody wants to tease you up and nobody wants to interrupt your uh, working modules, right? So in such a scenario, uh, the project always uh, we got handsome results, I'm telling you. Because the moment you tell someone, look, you are the safety manager of your own area. You are working for two hours. You are working for 10 hours on that particular day. Wherever you are working, consider yourself. You are responsible for your safety. You are responsible to keep others safe as well. So that kind of positive realization and you know, whatever most religion, is, especially Islam says, saving one life, saving the whole humanity. And killing one life, killing the whole humanity. So in such a scenario, it's a ibadah also. So it's kind of ethical responsibility, one of the, uh, the noblest job in the world, like keeping people safe, giving them awareness, keeping everything in certain order, not to create any chance of incident or accident, and keeping your colleagues, yourself, a better, uh, you know, safe professional at the site, uh, trust me, this is one of the noblest job you, you will be performing. But it's a kind of self-realization. That is why in top 20 reasons, somebody mentioned no self-realization. Let me show that one. No self-realization. See the last one? That safety is not my responsibility. This is the responsibility of safety officer, safety yeah. manager. This is very terrible misconception, you know, always we observe at different projects. Safety is everyone's responsibility. 
Safety starts from you. Safety starts from me, right? So my voice is clear. Let me let me uh, clarify again. Is there any problem with my voice? Can you hear me well? What about the presentation? Yes, sir. What about the presentation? Is quite visible. Yes, sir. Okay, brilliant. So we can move on. So next question is how we can avoid accidents or incidents. And can we achieve 100% safety? What is your opinion? Even you can use the chat box, you know, for replying. You can reply in the chat box as well. Why 100% safety is possible or you believe it's not possible? Please share your opinion, your thoughts, your experience, or you don't have experience, but these are common sense questions as well. For me, no, sir. We cannot achieve, but uh, we can lessen the risk. Excellent. And I, I also going to say not possible 100% safe, but trust me, we have to teach and give reminder to our mind every day, yes, 100% safety is possible. We have to pretend, we have to talk every day to our mind, no, no, 100% safety is possible. Zero accidents are possible. Zero accident club we can create. In. So because if you already gonna give negative energy to your mind, oh, 100% safety is not possible. So what you're gonna start doing is, you will start ignoring different safety rules and regulations. But once you believe, yes, 100% safety is possible, we can uh, have to put our all efforts and then the results will be excellent all the way. So your mind will give you positive energy automatically. This is how things will move on. Even Saudi Aramco, you know, one of the biggest oil and gas brands, they also agreed 100% safety is not possible, especially in oil and gas, oil and gas industry. <laughs> so that means it's, it's already a red zone. So if it's already a red zone, we have to be more careful for safety regulations and all. Anyone have any idea what is hazard? You know, and again, no bookish knowledge. It's an open dis discussion. And I want you guys to mention what is coming in your mind. What is hazard? What is hazard, guys? The definition of hazard. A condition that can cause harm when left uncontrolled. Okay. So that means anything harmful. Okay, so what is risk then? A probability. Probability. The chances. That can cause injury. So, what is safety then? A freedom from harm freedom or danger. From harm as per Saudi Aramco, right? But what about OSHA? What about other standards? You know? What is safety? <coughs> yes, I totally agree. So, freedom from risk, freedom from accident, freedom from any kind of harm, but through systematic way by implementing different kind of procedures, policies, and making every sort of your uh, business process change in a systematic way to ensure there is no chance of or very minimal chances of accidents. So this is how we start creating an environment, kind of a safe environment for our businesses. Now, any idea because we are talking about construction industry. So walking and working, such as hazards are quite uh, visible in construction industry. So what do you think, what kind of walking and working surface hazards could be there? 
still open discussion is going on for few more minutes yes guys walking and working surface walking it can be ladder it can be scaffolding it can be your surface you know your ground wherever you are walking me, I or can't, working uh, i can't hear you because i uh, hear the sound uh, okay no sorry i can't hear you because here in sound you hear the sound ah so you have sound there at your side Okay, please continue. Okay, so walking and working surface hazards. So, guys, uh, like scaffolding, like ladder, like any kind of stairs, or even the ground, either it's properly leveled or any trip fall hazards are there. And remember, fall is the number of, number one cause of fatalities globally. Even today, fall is the number one cause of fatalities globally. Remember that. Do you know what is confined space? Any idea, please? Any idea to anyone what is confined space? Look at the picture even. So a place which is not designed for human occupancy. A place where you're gonna get maybe less oxygen, more toxic gases, especially h 2 s okay? And a space nobody can enter without a permit. Scaffolding hazards, yes, uh, there could be like fall hazards or maybe collapse as well. So two terrible hazards are there, fall and collapse. Fall means any person can fall down, God forbid, or maybe any equipment or tools. What is exit rules? I hope you have an idea. At our site, the exit rules must be clearly defined in case of emergency, which route you are going to use and how you're going to reach to assembly point or muster point. That should be quite clear. Train hazards like, uh, you know, this uh, tip over or toppling over or different kind of uh, electrocution hazards at the overhead and even underground cables, so different kind of, or mechanical failure, or maybe the train operator is not certified or not trained enough, or the ID is expired or still is uh, operating this train, or might be operated by unauthorized person. PPs hazards, uh, any unapproved PP is a hazard or maybe you have PPs but you don't know how to use them as a hazard or maybe the condition of the PPs, if it is not good enough, again, it's a terrible hazard. So we will discuss all these things, even including HASCOM, hazard communication. We will discuss about uh, minimum and maximum level of oxygen, like as per OSHA, 19.5% is the minimum and 23.5% the maximum. But per, as per Saudi Aramco, 20% minimum and 23.5% the maximum. What is H2S? PL. PL means uh, permissible exposure limit. So we will discuss about H2S, the terrible. I would say the poisonous gas. It's very dangerous to H2S, huh? Sorry? This gas. This is H2S. Yeah, this is H2S. Yes, this is H2S. Yes, this is H2S. Yes, this is H2S. Hydrogen sulfide. Hydrogen sulfide gas. One of the monster to kill people, you know, especially in the confined spaces. Yeah. And in construction industry, and in oil and gas, and chemical industry, and in mining industry, you know, or uh, I would say there is no industry where you don't get any confined space, especially manholes, mostly you will get in most of the industry. Have you ever heard the word CO? What is CO stands for? What does that mean, CO? CO means carbon monoxide. 
carbon monoxide and permeable exposure like when this diesel petrol burns you know they create carbon monoxide so it's another hazard okay okay any idea about len lower explosive limit explosive or pl permeable exposure limit and we have uel also upper explosive you know any idea what is your inner temperature of your body the maximum inner temperature of our body any idea to anyone dr sahib sorry Thirty seven. Excellent, excellent, Masha. So, guys, remember, if the accident graph is going up and up, your company's goodwill, your company's success will go down and down. Unfortunately, if this accident graph will go up and up, that is why it is very much important to work on safety and make sure zero accident club within your company. now guys uh, we face different hazards like i took these two slides from saudi aramco theories because they have guided in a very smart way about hazards they distributed all hazards in two categories or in other words two types like safety hazards and health hazards and how they distinguish them a safety hazard is anything that can have adverse impact on your safety so safety as it means on your safety any impact because of hazard or adverse impact on your safety would call safety hazard and they have given some sub categories like electrical gravity mechanical motion and pressure and they gave certain examples as well like power lines transformers static charges lighting energizer equipment wiring and batteries and even crane means uh, gravity means crane lifting operation excavation falling objects Plastic roof and a body tripping or falling. Same like for mechanic, like rotating shaft, motion means vehicle, anything which is moving, including wind speed as well. And pressure means pressure piping, compressed cylinders, control lines, especially in oil and gas. And what is health hazard? Anything that have adverse impact on your health. So that could be biological, chemical, radiation, noise and vibration, including temperature as well. So, what are the examples? Animals, bacteria, virus, insects, blood-borne pathogens, improperly handled food, and contaminated water. These are some of the like this COVID-19, this coronavirus. It's a biological hazard. That is why it's quite invisible. That is why it's really hard to fight with that. The whole world is in trouble, right? Chemicals could be in form of dust, fumes, gases, mist, vapors, liquids. same way we have radiations we have noise and vibration and even temperature so two categories the master category is like safety hazard health hazard and five five sub categories these two slides are are just uh, derived from saudi aramco standards for better easy understand so now i have an exercise for all of you please you can use the chat box if your if my voice is not clear i need your response in the chat box i will show you one picture and you just need to highlight the hazards i repeat again i will show you one picture and you have to show me or type in the chat box what are the hazards out of this picture you believe are there so i'm showing picture number 1 Take your time, please, and reply me in the chat box. Look at the picture. जोनासन जोनासन 
improper placement of gas cylinder yes or no ardu edi edi Okay, I'm asking straightforwardly. Is there any electrical hazard? Yes or no? Yes. You can reply in the chat. Yes, yes. Do you have any gravitational hazard or gravity hazard? Something can fall down. Yes. This. Uh, Do you have pressure hazard? After. Pressure hazard because we have certain cylinder or compressed gas cylinders is there. Yes, there is. Any mechanical hazard? So this is how you need to respond. You know what kind of hazards you believe are there. So I'm going to share another picture. Look at this picture and let me know what kind of hazards you believe are there. So electrical hazard because of this overhead power lines, right? Yes. Yes, the boy. Take another picture now. Hey, multiple still no control. Look at this gentleman. Look at the condition of this ladder. Look at the shortcut. And uh, the lady and the uh... switching ladder. Mm. Look at the manual handling. Yeah, yeah. Even four set in order, four stacking, standing under suspended load, and look at the first stator. The manhole. The floor condition, the oil spillage, or look at the tools management. Poor management, I would say. So slip strips and fall hazards are there. Forklift operator, look at no PPs, no proper PPs. So guys, take another picture. Look at this hero. Instead of taking a better ladder, the suitable one. We love to take shortcuts. And look at this fire exit block with pellets. Look at another hero is there. The overconfident one. I can do it. I don't need man basket. Look at this gentleman. I can lift up. Eight boxes, and look at the leaders standing under suspended, and how the forklift is moving because the forks are so up. So, anybody have an idea? The forks from the ground should be how much higher? You know, while you are moving your forklift from the ground, what should be the forks? Height, you know, from the ground. So remember, guys, it shouldn't be above them six to eight inches, or maximum eight inches. 
Look at another other picture. See the condition of the floor. The wrong lifting method. The chemicals without labels. Poor waste management. Look at this gentleman. The overall condition, unnecessary items, no proper certain order. <laughs> Look at the behavior of this gentleman. Is totally unaware. That means no hazard recognition training might be. He don't understand how to recognize hazard by himself rather than relying on safety department always. Take another picture. And most of these things you will see in construction industry. You are as a safety manager or as a safety officer at site, everyone is calling safety. You came back to your <laughs> office, nobody cared. So look, look at all the heroes. Start with scuff folders. See? Look at the waste management. Forklift operator. The cutter, the manual handler, the chemical management, the spillage, the drainage, underground cables. Look at these two heroes. Excavations and heavy equipment, how they're using. So be careful guys, safety is a huge responsibility. I mean, you are a safety officer for a particular project. You can't ignore all these things. You surely have to take some steps, you know, to improve such kind of unsafe conditions. And if you can't change this mindset or you can't change this culture, don't join safety professions. If you're not a mind changer, if you can't change the culture of a company, don't join, don't, because you have to be psychiatric. You have to be a very smart leader, you know, as a safety professional. You have to be a better trainer, a better communicator, a better document controller even. You will be dealing to electrical engineers, the civil engineers, you know, plenty of uh, other engineers, a lot, a lot of engineers we have on board. That means you have to be technically expert person for your industry, wherever you're working, for all the processes. It's not like simply to join as a safety officer and get the paycheck every month and leave everything behind you. I hope you got the point. Our biggest responsibility is change this type of unsafe acts and conditions and culture mm -hmm. and the mindset. Even though changing the mindset, of course, is so difficult, but not impossible. Take another example. Mm -hmm. okay. Look at the value of no smoking. He loves to smoke. The lady likes bike poster instead of health and safety poster. <laughs> God is there, but she doesn't like to use the guard. Look at this village, hard hat area, but he loves to move with the hard hat. Look at the fire exit already blocked and the 
manual handling, you know, the lifting. That is why, that is why every company or every country have particular safety standards and regulations to keep their people safe, to make sure there are very less number of injuries or illness or kind of accidents, especially in construction industry. So the question is, why is OSHA important to you? Do you have any idea what is OSHA? O-H-S-A stands for what? Any idea to anyone? O Occupational -S -S Safety Health Administration. Safety and Health and Administration. Safety Health Administration. So it's a legal department of USA. Remember, first of all, it's a legal department of USA and these OSHA regulations are, first of all, are well implemented in 50 states of USA. And these OSHA regulations, all other countries are not bound to follow. Remember my words. But willingly, if they like OSHA regulations and procedures or guidelines, they can adopt them. If they believe they don't have local safety standards complying all the requirements so they can get help from OSHA. But OSHA is quite open with their knowledge, with their kind of best practices. Here. They share globally. And especially wherever you have American brands, then definitely you need to follow OSHA regulations because your client will impose as an American, he's bound to follow American standards. So we will clear some of the things you know, while we study, what right do you have under OSHA? What responsibilities does your employer have? And what the OSHA stand, uh, the standards say? And how are OSHA inspections conducted? And where can you go for help? So these answers of these six questions you will get out of this first module. Now, the first topic is why is OSHA important to you? Remember the day OSHA began because until 1970, there were no national laws. That was the number one reason for safety and health hazards. On average, 15 workers on that time, every day from the job injuries were there. Over 5,600 Americans die from workplace injuries annually. So for them, it's a huge number. Even one life is, you know, having a lot of importance instead of 5,600 is a huge number. Over 4 million non-fatal workplace injuries and illness are reported. So because of these huge numbers, they started working on different safety standards. Now, when during your work experience, did you hear about OSHA? Have you ever hear about OSHA or just uh, this is first time you are through this training session? You are listening about OSHA. And what no, did you no, think no. about OSHA then? And what do you think OSHA job is? So these are some of the discussion points. Whenever you get time, you can just, because I'll share this presentation with all of you, because these are your personal discussions with yourself. Uh, online is a hard for group discussion, but right now, if someone can participate and can share, what do you think OSHA job is? What are the key responsibilities of OSHA? Anyone can share your concepts or your perceptions. What is the real job of OSHA? Save them or save the people. If the people, especially in the companies. You know. Yeah. Okay. So what is OSHA's mission then? The mission of OSHA is to save lives, like you mentioned earlier, prevent injuries and protect the health of America's workers. Some of the things OSHA does to carry out its missions are what? Developing job safety and health standards and enforcing them through worksite inspection, 
so osha is responsible for inspections as well it's not like only to developing the standards or implementing them or enforcing them even later on they have authority to visit different companies and have some inspection maintaining a reporting and recording record keeping system to keep track of job related injuries and illness so they are the data analyzers they collect the information and data and they analyze as well what is going on in terms of job related injuries and illness and accordingly they are also responsible to provide training programs to increase knowledge about occupational safety and health that is the key statements of osha's mission no why was osha necessary what is osha mission and why is this training important already the answers you studied in the previous slide but just you need to keep in your mind you know if you get any question related to osha's mission this slide is important mean these three points these three points are important if there would be any question in the exam about osha's mission what are the osha's mission statement so these three statements are important like developing job safety and health standards maintaining a reporting and record keeping system and providing training program okay guys so second topic of the module one is what right do you have under osha what rights do you have under osha so plenty of rights are there few are mentioned you have the right to work a safe and helpful workplace know about hazardous chemicals information about injuries and illness in your workplace this is your right nobody can stop you especially in america you know they can't say oh we will not give you healthy uh, workplace or they can't say we can't give you any training about hazardous chemicals or we will not give you any training about hazard exposure and uh, or kind of uh, hazard correction you know. or hazard exposure and medical records that's another right of you they have to maintain file a complaint with osha this is again your right if the employer of usa or any company owner is not ensuring all these things you have a right to complain file a complaint you know. participate in an osha inspection you have right for that be free for retaliation for exercising safety and health rights so that was uh, all about topic 2 that means what right do you have under osha so from every slide nobody can remember every word so what you have to do is just simple like okay safe workplace enough knowledge about hazardous chemical information especially about injuries and illness what else training is your right hazard exposure medical records you have a right to file a complaint and also participate in an osha inspection and also remember be free from retaliation for exercising safety and health right if nobody is listening you you have a right to go for certain actions legally but should be legally compliant now safe and health workplace this is kind of creation of osha provided workers the right to a safe and health for workplace now osha standards have certain sections and certain kind of uh, uh, you know acts and which you truly need to remember sometime like section 5a1 of the osha act states each employer shall furnish to each of his employees employment and a place of employment which are free from recognized hazards that are causing a likely to cause death or serious physical harm to his employees so that means every employer have to understand what osha x is talking about especially helpful workplace now you that is another your right to know about the hazardous chemicals like if the chemical is there and your employer is say i i can't provide you you know msds like or scs safety data sheet or uh, material safety data sheet 
or I can't provide you, like if you're working with Saudi Aramco, and they're gonna say, we can't provide you CHP, like chemical hazard bulletin, it's not acceptable. You can retaliate, you can definitely uh, tell to them, this is your right to get the information about this chemical for safe management. Otherwise, even this chemical would be a, a dangerous element for you, would be a terrible hazard, I would say. That is why it is clearly mentioned, employers must have a written, complete HASCOM, hazard communication program that includes information, what? Container label, you are buying a chemical, the label must be there. You are distributing this chemical to others, every bucket, every, uh, you know, uh, distributed container must have the same label. Then there must be MSDS, material safety data sheet, you have a right for training, and also make sure you have certain kind of procedures which employer have to implement to protect you or the other workers, such as work practices, emergency procedures, and they are responsible to provide you the PPs, like the personal protective equipment, especially for hazardous chemicals. So you have to know about your rights. What are my rights? The problem in the world is, 85%, I would say, the audience, the employees, especially the foundational employees, like, you know, who are working as a, a painters or as a welder or as a, a crane operators or as a standby man or something like that, they don't know they, about their rights, actually. That is a big problem in the market. Now, information about injuries and illness. This is an important slide, guys. Maybe you will get one question in the exam as well, I don't know, but still uh, uh, because of these numbers, there is a possibility they can ask a question. OSHA's record keeping rule requires most employers with more than 10 workers to keep a log of injuries and illnesses. Wherever you have 10 workers or above, you need to maintain a log of injuries and illnesses. You can't say, oh, sorry, we don't have log sheet. We don't have any record about hand injuries, about back pains, about headaches, about certain kind of illness. It's not acceptable as per OSHA regulation. Now, another right is workers have the right to review the current log as well as the log stored for the past five years. Workers also have the right to view the annually posted summary of the injuries and illness like OSHA 300A clearly mentioned that the workers have right to view the annually posted summary of the injuries and illnesses. So know your right, this is your right as per OSHA. Now, complaint or request corrections. Complaint or request corrections. Again, it's your right, like workers may bring up safety and health concerns in the workplace to their employers. To their employers. That means you have a right to talk directly to the owners of the companies even. The general manager, the president, the managing director or the CEO, whoever is there. It's not like only to your supervisor or only to you. Like if your supervisor is not cooperating or the safety manager is not listening to you, then you have right to go up to the employer, like the owners of the company to talk about. And the owners must publish within the company that this is my number or this is my email ID. Any employee have any concerns, please just contact me directly or via email email or call me at this, this, this number, whatever. So they have to be, you know, uh, available openly for all the employees to listen to them if there is any kind of fear of discharge or discrimination, as long as the complaint is made in good faith. Now, OSHA regulations like 29 CFR 1977.9C clearly protect what? The workers who complain to their employer about unsafe or unhelpful conditions in the workplace. So, OSHA basically is protecting us. Us means the USA citizens first. If we are working there, again, we also have the same right. But if American brands are working with us, they will definitely demand, where is your 
OSHA training or know your right because you can complain anything to OSHA because we are Americans, we are your customers. So you have right to uh, follow OSHA regulations and work accordingly with us. This is your right. Training is your right. Nobody can deny if you don't know for something and uh, that something is quite dangerous as per your job nature, you have a right for training. You can definitely request again and again, like in writing, verbal, whatever the way is there through your supervisor. Training is your right. Unfortunately, I noted personally for the last 19 years, people don't come to their managers. Sorry, sir, I have 20 job responsibilities but I'm fully trained only for 15, one five. The rest of the five, I need proper trainings. Worker, they don't come to their managers. I don't know why, because this is your right. If you are not trained for a particular job responsibility, then you can go to at any level and tell them, this is your gray area or this is your kind of lacking area where you truly need proper training to enhance your competence. And every company have a strong slogan word, the right person for the right job. That is why I always mention training and development both are reciprocal. If you don't train your people, what you are doing, you are stopping their development. You are stopping the growth of knowledge and growth of your company. That is why training sometimes might be required, such as local tag out, blood from pathogens, noise, confined spaces, fall hazards, construction, personal protective equipment, along with a variety of other subjects. So, guys, I'm encouraging you, I'm trying to motivate you. Go back and see your job responsibilities. And if there is any job responsibility you believe, you are technically weak or logically, you have no idea how to perform this particular responsibility, then request your manager, request your general manager, please for this particular responsibility, I need to get trained myself. So provide the resources, provide the resources, but don't be rude, be technically, logically correct and have some emotional intelligence as well. It's not like directly, Oh, if you will not provide me training for this, I will not do this. I can't do this. I'm not talking about such kind of behaviors. You have to be polite. You have to be diplomatically correct and convince them through your convincing power. Tell your leadership, these are the gray areas where you need proper training. You know? And that topic, topic can be any topic as, as in relevant to your job, especially. Now, Examine exposure and medical records like 1910.1020. This regulation says or clause says right to examine and copy records example of toxic substances, harmful physical agents like metals and dust, such as lead, cadmium, and even silica, biological agents like bacteria, viruses, and fungi. Like I mentioned, this coronavirus is a biological hazard. Now, physical stress such as noise, heat, cold. Vibration, repetitive motions, and ionizing and non-ionizing radiation. Again, it's your right to file a complaint with OSHA. You can file a complaint if you believe there is a, a violation of a safety or health standard, and there is an imminent danger situation exists in the workplace, which can be dangerous, first of all, for you or even for your colleagues or even to your neighbor community, I would say. Workers may request that their name not be revealed to the employer. If a worker files a complaint, they have the right to find out OSHA action on the complaint and request a review if an inspection is not made. So uh, you don't, you know, uh, your name will be kept secret actually. OSHA don't reveal your name. Whatever you are reporting about your employer, if there is any unsafe conditions or they are not taking any serious action, you have a right to complain because you you are doing job for the sake of your family survival, not to kill yourself, right? So that is why you truly need to know about your rights. 
no participate in a OSHA inspection. That's another right you have. Employee representative can accompany what? OSHA inspector, workers can talk to the inspector, even privately. Workers may appoint uh, what? Hazards, describe injuries, illnesses or near misses, whatever, you know, something badly happening with safety system or any concern you have relevant to safety, it's your right to talk to the inspector. Workers can find out about inspection results, abatement measures, and may object the date set for what is to be corrected. So that's your right to participate in our OSHA inspection. Be free from retaliation. So workers have the right to be free from retaliation for exercising safety and health rights. So nobody can penalize you for implementing safety or acquiring safety or some of the resources, you know, to ensure your safety or your department or even your colleagues. Workers have a right to seek safety and health on the job without fear of punishment. Without fear of punishment. This is another phenomenon that we don't talk to our leadership. I noted a lot of contractors, guys. They don't talk confidently, even with Saudi Aramco officials. Here. And trust me, Saudi Aramco officials, as a customer, they are the great supporter. If you don't have any SOP for any particular activity or process, go and ask them. If you have any confusion at your project, go and get help, you know, instead of hiding everything from Saudi Aramco officials. Then they will enjoy only the bossy job or sitting in their office and doing nothing, you know, because you are not getting their support. They are uh, getting involved by themselves whenever they are free or whenever they have time, right? Otherwise, safety is everyone's responsibility. You are a contractor or you are a customer. You are a government agency or you are an employee. All together, we all are responsible for safety. That is why it starts from you, it starts from me. So there shouldn't be any shyness, no hesitation, and no fear. No fear to talk anyone if you are facing some issues. Like, as I told you, if you have 20 responsibilities, for five responsibilities out of 20, you are not technically sound and you need proper training, go and ask your management why you are scaring, you know, why be fearless and talk to them politely. These are the areas where you need better counseling or kind of training. I'm just encouraging, I'm just motivating you guys. Otherwise, this is your life. You have a right to go and spend your life the way you want. But make sure you know your rights. This right is spelled out in section C of the OSHA Act. Workers have 30 days to contact OSHA if they feel they have been punished for exercising their safety and health rights. So that's another right you need to remember. Now, what are the responsibilities uh, you know, the employer have under OSHA? Now, such kind of questions will also be helping you in future. If you go for Nibosh IGC and they ask, oh, what are the responsibilities of employer under OSHA or, or they ask, you know, what responsibilities does your employer have? So you can write these responsibilities, but give the reference that under OSHA, you are writing these responsibilities of an employer. So you will get handsome marks, I'm telling you. Because now in Nibosh have open book exam, right? Open book exam means you can research, you can find out the right answer, but make sure this is your work, not the work copied by others, or you don't hire any agent to resolve your Nibosh ITC exam or OB, like open book exam, okay? I'm just sharing the benefit of this material. Keep records of engineering. What OSHA is saying, the employer is responsible to provide workplace free from recognized hazards. The employer is responsible to provide trainings. He is responsible to keep records of injuries and illness. He is uh, responsible to provide medical exams when required by OSHA standard and also access to medical records. 
not discriminate against workers who exercise their rights under the Act, Section 11C. That means no discrimination. Post OSHA citations and abatement verification notices provide and pay for payment. These are seven major responsibilities, I would say, of an employer under OSHA standards. I repeat again, he is responsible to provide a workplace free from recognized hazards, can be electrical, can be mechanical, can be gravitational, pressure, physical, and can be biological, chemical, or even radiation, vibration, or environmental, whatever. Whichever hazard is there must be free from recognized hazards. He's responsible for that. And also training, keep record, medical exam, medical records, no discrimination, PPs, and also make sure the verification notices are there against any OSHA citations and abatement. Now, what employers are required to, like keep records of injuries and illness, reporting and recording checklist. There must be kind of a checklist, what OSHA is recommending, like report each worker death, it's a legal responsibility, especially in the USA, even in Saudi Arabia, I would say, even in every country of the world, this is the responsibility of a company to report, to report each worker's death, if it has happened at their site or within their company. Report each incident that hospitalizes three or more workers, maintain injury and illness records, inform workers how to report an injury or illness to the work employers, make records available to the workers, allow OSHA access to records, and even post annual summary of injuries and illness. So employers are fully responsible to maintain proper records of each incident or even the death. Now, remember, you and one of the company, let me share straightforwardly. In one of the company while doing a safety audit, the moment I went to the printing section and I noted three guys were there. One was Filipino, let me mention the nationalities as well. One was Indian and the third one was Sri Lanka. Now, the, the Filipino guy, I noted he was having, you know, this NIOSH approved, I would say, air purification respirator. You know, the respirator, which will clean the air, and you will get maximum clean uh, oxygen or kind of air, which you require to keep your lungs healthy to ensure your better health. I still remember the question like six, seven years before. I asked the guy, do you have friendship with your safety manager? So he straightforwardly mentioned, no, no, sir. I don't have any friendship with him. Then how come you got this, uh, such an expensive respiratory? And I still remember the golden words. You know what he mentioned? He mentioned, sir, look, if company doesn't care about my life, does not mean I should start killing myself. My life is my responsibility. My life is very much important for my family first. So my life is not that much cheap that if company doesn't provide the right suitable respirator or kind of PPs, I should start killing myself. My life is not that much cheap. So I invested four or five hundred real from my own pocket. Later on, even though we appreciated, we gave him kind of a certificate and also we, you know, unfortunately, uh, we proposed that the safety manager have to resign because he's not ensuring the right set of culture while visiting every day. But he was ignoring all this thing. That the gentleman is, because the employer is responsible to provide PPs and buy the PPs from their own pocket. Not the employee, you know, it's a legal violation. Anyhow, the second guy who was not wearing the mask at all, I asked 
that gentleman why you're not wearing that mask so he mentioned look sir where were you before 10 years now my mind is addicted my mind is addicted with inch henna retarder and other chemicals while they are mixing and for the last 10 12 years nobody asked me to wear the mask and now my mind is addicted even without this smell it's really hard for me to survive so i can't wear any mask and he was having the same answer for everyone but technically he was expert person like above 50 years old so company was bound to keep him and not to lose him because he was technically so much expert for this uh, printing process and the terrible statement i still remember he mentioned even friday is a killing day for me so i take thinner in water bottle you so nobody can catch me because thinner is also clear or transparent like water so nobody can catch me because friday is a killing day for me i need this kind of smell so that's why on friday i drink this thinner just to survive because my mind is addicted same like the chain smoker like go back go back within your company and if you have a chain smoker tell this chain smoker look today to onward or tomorrow to onward you will not smoke even a single cigarette for 12 hours within our company at the project site and see the reaction he will leave your job but will not quit smoking because his mind is addicted with the nicotine right you know in my sessions i don't mm -hmm. stop people why you are using mobile don't use mobile i don't stop them because i know they are addicted yes humbly i can request them or i can give them some permission go outside enjoy your addiction and come back with better focus you know, rather than disturbing others so this kind of realization we need as an employer rather than making people you know horribly addicted for different kind of bad things okay guys so this uh, was the module one and uh, what are some of the responsibilities so we discussed and also discrimination is prohibited and pps must be provided by the employer until now let me know if you guys have any question so we will start uh, day after tomorrow again inshallah until now let me know if there is any question otherwise i need five more minutes to show you osha website how it will be helping tomorrow us. tomorrow same the time no not tomorrow day after tomorrow because you have scheduled tomorrow yeah day after tomorrow like today then on wednesday then on saturday this is the schedule what i got okay okay from our office and uh, please uh, share with me your whatsapp number i will create a whatsapp group and will keep sharing uh, different important notes of kind of knowledge inshallah